Nick. LLF. Back on the channel. You alright mate? Yeah I'm good, I'm good. Back again with the beast. Mm, picked a nice day as well haven't we? The beast. Nice blue, nice blue skies. Yes, 20 degrees. 20 Loving degrees it. yeah? Yeah. And you've got your Nankangs on haven't you? Nankangs, AR1s, we'll be testing those today. Mm. They should be pretty good. I had a go with them uh, recently but it was only like 7 degrees so um, it didn't really give much of an answer to right. whether they grip properly or not, but today they should be spot on. Okay, so Nick, for anybody that's new to the channel, uh, do you want to explain maybe the spec of the car at the moment? I know you've had a few little updates, um, but we recently did a collection video oh, yep. a few months back. So anyone that's new, do you want to just... Yeah, so this was Ian Litchfield's old um, car. So he bought this new and did a lot of work to it, a huge amount of work. It had a specialized engine with low compression pistons and all the rest of it. Uh, six, seven, five, eight turbos. Uh, it's had loads of stuff done. It's had upgraded brakes. It's got the Alcon Super kits. Um, it's got Nurburgring, lightweight alloys, um, loads of stuff. The list just goes on and on. It was an LM900. It's now technically an LM1000 because it's had bigger turbos put on just recently. Okay. Uh, when I first got the car, I actually broke the flywheel on it, but uh, that was replaced just recently. Uh, thankfully, um, Litchfield have just really, really looked after me. Um, so they uh, sorted all that out for me. Um, yeah, it's basically going well. Really, really happy with it. Everything you expected? Oh, and, and, and more. It, it was absolutely epic picking it up. I was so excited. Mm. Um, it's totally different to any other car I've ever had, to be honest. People ask me what's it like, and I just can't really describe. You know, the RS6 in comparison, it's just, it's, there is no comparison. Mm. It's a whole different level of engineering, this car. And again, you know, you go to Litchfield and it's a whole different level of service yeah. and everything else there. The, the guys that work there, it's like you go to NASA or something no, when, honestly, when you turn up there. It's, it's just brilliant. Yeah. It's I so enjoy it and I, I just love the fact that Ian Litchfield is so approachable and knowledgeable and yeah, the whole, the whole experience has been fantastic. So um, you have had some updates, so you say you've put bigger turbos on, yeah? Yeah, I said to Ian, do you know what, when we're, if we're taking the engine out, uh, to replace the flywheel, why don't we just update the turbos? Um, I just fancied, you know, sort of preparing it for the future um, of potentially more power. People right. think I might be crazy going more than a thousand, but there are people out there who have gone 13, 1400 and loving life. So yeah. I don't know why not. I don't think I'll go any further than that. But yeah. um, so I, I, he said, yeah, we'll put some turbos on for you. Um, and I'll put the 7663s on. Never heard of those before, but they're quite big compared to the 6758s apparently. And it performs really, really well now. Um, they tweaked the final map on the road rather than on a dyno. Um, they were doing a lot of road mapping on it, so it's probably just over a thousand horsepower now. But um, yeah, it's still running safe power for the engine it's got because it's not got the sport engine, it's not got cams or anything yet. Yeah. Uh, it has been built, the engine, it's been fully full, it's got really, really good rods and pistons and everything else. but. We're, we're waiting to do the next step on, which is the sport engine with the cams and everything. So, so that's future plans, yeah? Yeah, it basically changes gear still at seven and a half, and once you go sport, I think you can change gear about eight. The 4.6 will probably do really well uh, with the bigger turbos, uh, is what I'm told. The 4.6 has that much more torque as well, so it's quite exciting. It, apparently it feels like a completely different car, so that's what I'll be going for at the end of this year. I don't use this car as a daily anymore. Yeah, this is cool. just a treat for me, so when I take it out at the weekend or at an event or whatever, it's just pure fun. I'm gonna be changing the seats over for the Carbon Alpha AMS seats, uh, fall in love with those, make it a bit more lightweight. So it just allows me to go that much more extreme with the car, bit that I'm not using it as a daily like I was the RS6. So, right. you know, it's just nice to, uh, you know, put all these bits on and, and have fun. So, so is basically. it the fast car you've ever owned, Nick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. by miles. God, yeah. it's, it's, it's an absolute weapon. Yeah. <laughs> but again, the engineering level, you just, I, I, every single time I take it out, it doesn't, I don't get used to it. You know, right. it's constantly right. scaring me every time. And realistically, you know, like I say, it makes the RS6 just feel like a diesel in comparison, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I hate to say it, sorry RS6 owners, I know they're wonderful uh, cars and all the rest of it, but it very much depends on what you've just come out of, so, um, but yeah, th this thing is just incredible, and for the money, 
there's just not a better car out there, surely. So it looks like you changed the bonnet as well, Nick? Yeah, uh, it was actually this particular bonnet that I wanted. Um, I didn't realise, but they stopped making them. So uh, I contacted Night Racer, um, brilliant guy, Albert. He was really helpful, said he's basically found me one. It wasn't in uh, pure sort of carbon uh, anymore. It was painted. Um, so I just said, that's fine. I would have had it painted anyway. So if you can have it painted in my colour, um, stick it on. And he did. Uh, I went down there, wh whipped it on for me whilst I waited. What's that? Another 100 brake? About 150 <laughs> brake. <laughs> when you work it out, yeah. <laughs> We've got so, about 20 scoops. Yeah, I know. I love it. I've no, seen no, all mate, of it them. It makes it look so aggressive. When you go to Litchfield, trust me, it's a day out, right? You yeah. can just walk around the car park and there is not one GTR that's the same as the other one. Mm. And I just absolutely love that. They all had different body kits, different wheels, different tyre setups, different spoilers, different bonnets. And this is the one. I kept seeing it. I kept thinking, oh, I don't even know what it's called, but this is the one. And I sent Albert a photo. He went, I've got one. I was yeah. like, brilliant. So, yeah. Spoiler as well? Spoiler, yeah, yeah. That was all did from eBay, I think. Um, Makes it look a lot more aggressive as well, doesn't it? I like, as my friend Andy says, I like OEM Plus. So it yeah. looks like it might have been sort of like that from the factory, but That's you ordered right. it as an extra. Yeah. Extra. The, it doesn't fit the best because it's made in a country that doesn't, you know. Mm. Uh, look after those sorts of things very well but yeah it it looks great yeah. but I'm a bit of an OCD perfectionist really so we had to use a lot of glue <laughs> <laughs> what about exhaust Nick was exhaust it, it? it was triple silenced um, when I first picked it up and I just thought it could do with a little bit more uh, so they made it a double silenced instead of triple so they took the they changed the wire pipe I didn't actually notice that much difference. So I did say to Ian, can I have the race exhaust? So no silences at all, because I'd just roll like that. You know, the M5 was a straight pipe as well. Everyone yeah. loved it. But do you know what? I listened to Ian. Whatever he says goes, basically. <laughs> he, he just said, you won't want that. It's like full hooligan yeah. mode. So I, I, I just took his advice. I just went, yeah, cool. We'll just leave it as a double silence. But I'm, I'm fine. It's a whole symphony of sounds. You know, you can hear the gearbox whining, you can hear the turbo slurping and, and the exhaust as well. So I think it's probably quite a nice balance of, of noises as us car guys like to hear when we're going along the road, you know. Well, even following you just now, yeah, you can hear it. And it's like you said, it's, is it third or fourth gear? It's like to wind on. Third really winds, yeah. yeah. And depends on what uh, temperature the gearbox is at. Uh, it makes different noises at different times, but um, but yeah, I mean, the, the turbos make different noises every time you come off the throttle as well, and it's mm. quite nice to hear that. If it was a race exhaust, I might not be able to hear some of those noises anymore, so it would yeah. be unbalanced. Yeah, so I'm quite yeah. glad I took his advice. Yeah. So. No, it's true. It's yeah. True. All right, shall we get out, Nick? I think we should. Yeah. <laughs> temperature at 21 um, I'm still finding that second gear 
I'm still finding the traction control just coming on. Talking to some of the big power GTR guys, they said that, you know, there's people crashing in a straight line uh, yeah. on a dry, sunny day, which obviously we don't want to do. Uh, <laughs> trying to do draggy runs, you know, it's, it's all <laughs> draggy about draggy, run. draggy, draggy, draggy now, runs. like literally. Yeah. But no, I'm still finding that it, it's the traction control is quite intrusive in second gear and I, and I don't really know where it comes in in third gear I don't know the car well enough to feel it yet do you know what I mean yeah, with the M5 I could feel every tiny little thing but it's still quite a new car to me but you was so. daily in the M5 wasn't you that's it yeah you, you're not daily in this was the plan to daily it originally or it was <laughs> amazingly I was gonna I was gonna daily it but it's just too extreme I'm definitely slightly worried man yeah right after yeah feeling that pull from the passenger that yeah. is some serious power it was starting to really motor wasn't it guys <laughs> that's why I love it but you can't get used time, to look at how the Nissan GTR deals with it though man yeah you can't it even tell it? it doesn't even do it any justice calling it a Nissan it, it's like <laughs> it's its own it's a handmade car you know like it, it just doesn't feel right calling it a Nissan <laughs> Guys, I'm in control. The Rick's 
there is behind the wheel. It's like a ninja, man. It is, isn't it? G-Charles a ninja, trust me. It feels nice and pumped up on each side, isn't it? It's yeah. These, it's these builds, these, isn't it? So it's in manual mode right now. Yeah. But if I don't shift in time, it will shift itself. Yeah, I asked them to set it up like that so that if I get it wrong and I don't shift in time, it will shift at the right point for me. Right. So you've got to change down yourself. Yeah. But changing up, it will do it for you. Oh, nice. And do you know how many RPMs you've got until it does it so far? It's different in every gear. It will do it at seven and a half in some gears, seven and a quarter in others. <laughs> you like to throw it into corners, didn't you? So do you yeah. find yourself just not even bothering with corners I, and stuff? No, there's no, there's no, no point. point. I might yeah. push it a little bit sometimes, but, but nowhere near its limit. Yeah, I mean, there's not really much telling me right now that it's a, a thousand horsepower GTR. It definitely drives around like a normal GTR, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not overly loud, is it? No. Like you say as well, because the exhaust isn't overly loud, yeah. you can hear all those bushes up front, can't you? Yeah. You're hearing sounds that you probably wouldn't normally hear. Sometimes it... Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does the normal like. Hell, it's totally different from the passenger seat. It gripped in second hand. It changed by itself then as well. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Thank God it does because it happens so quick. You just and it does itself. Yeah. And I tell you what, it feels quicker now than when we were on the test drive when I first went out in it. So those yeah. turbos must have done something. And it definitely gripped in second then, everyone, just to let you know. Yeah. Definitely gripped in second yeah. then. No traction control intrusion whatsoever. And the traction control is on. Do you think it could do with another couple of hundred horsepower? You can never have uh, <laughs> enough power. Can I don't you? think you, you can, can never have enough power. So I think if any platform can deal with this kind of power, uh, it's going to be the GTR because like the TTRS for example that your dad's doing that's going to be a whole different thing isn't it with yeah. running that bar you really you're going to expose it's... the car in you like yeah. the, the real the chassis of it you know my well, dad doesn't really realise what he's got in his hands I think it's that's going to feel that's like that's going to be that's ludicrous power well, it does feel rock solid doesn't it? doesn't it yeah oh, I've not felt this on the GTR before you know great time right now it's just, it just petrifies me but I know he can handle it you know what I mean it's like there's an overly heavy feeling when turning the car like yeah, even now like a tank like compared feeling. to a normal GTR I've driven three or four GTRs and just right, right there and that's a bit it just darts yeah, doesn't it it's, it's got a much more heavier much more planted feel wow that gives off different sounds doesn't it I know Said. Every it's time we change gear, it's so a different far. sound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The reaction I'm giving from this car right now is probably not as bad as some of the other cars I've driven, yeah. um, but it's 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 hundred percent down to how well this car is built. It's the yeah. overall package. Yeah. It's a usable car. Like um, you can easily drive it. Some of these other cars that shove a load of power in, they don't work on other areas of the car, which is yeah. why they might feel a little different. But there's no doubt that this is the fastest car. And it's not just because it's near, like there's, there's no way. This is the fastest car you've driven? Yeah, yeah, without fail, yeah, okay. without fail. I will say, my mate Brian uh, took him out the other day, uh, Brian and Billy, yeah. shout out to you two. Uh, Brian was actually sick uh, on route. <laughs> I've never had that before. I mean, he's only used to like a 1.4 diesel, bless him, right? He, he's not a speed freak. And he said, oh, come on, this car's supposed to be quick, take me out of the car. Um, and we had to pull over, yeah, he was in a bad way. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> I've never screamed like that 
before. Now I know what all the passengers go through. Yeah, I was just going to say that um, the Nankang tyre review will be ongoing. Um, basically, the long and short of it is, just in case, you know, some people have been thinking, what the hell is this guy talking about? They are gripping more than the PS4s, simple as that. But I need to get them uh, to a point where I work out my traction control. Sorry guys, but I haven't worked it out at all yet. I've got uh, the standard car traction control uh, on, and I've also got the Litchfield traction control on. So I don't know which one's kicking in at what point, yeah. but I know that Rick has just done a second gear pull, and again, it didn't slip at all. Uh, that was that was pretty epic actually. I could feel that there was no intrusion at all in second gear there. So I don't know whether that means much to you guys, but um, yeah, it, it, it grips really, really well at the moment. But I have had it on and off a bit because of the traction control. All right guys, gonna end the video there. Nick, thank you so much, yeah. man. Doesn't hesitate to let me drive his cars. Yeah, absolutely. Really appreciate it, man. And um, do you wanna shout out anybody? No, no, just my Insta, LLF Nick, obviously. Yeah. So go follow me and you can find out more about my dad and all the rest of it. So that's where he puts all of his stuff on as well. So yeah. Yeah. And a uh, shout out to Litchfield as well for creating such a beast, man. Like Litchfield. definitely if you're absolutely planning to mod a GTR, highly recommend checking them out. And uh, if you're planning to buy a GTR, they sell GTRs as well. A lot of people don't realise that. So they've got a fantastic stock. So give them a ring. Speak yeah. to Neil at Litchfields. Okay, so guys, yeah, if you did enjoy the video, remember to smash the thumbs up, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.